Lex, Michael, great to see the pair of you. Thanks very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us a little bit about what's going on with the EU DCA. Tell me, as this industry moves from being unregulated to regulated, how are operators and vendors going to prepare for this change? So, you know what, you start with policy. Why not? <laughs> I started with policy yeah. with the European Data Center Association five years ago before this man took it over. Um, we saw with the Green Deal white paper that there was this wave to create some form of, of regulation around sustainability. So we, we really think that this is a once in an industry transformation. Many industries never even go through it. So this is, this is only gonna happen once ever, go from unregulated to regulated. So it's, it's a massive change. Um, it's changes we'll deal with. We've had to deal with a lot of change. We've dealt with the COVID pandemic. We've dealt with all sorts of other issues in the past, like the uh, dot-com bubble crash in 2000. Both of us lost our hair then. Um, so it's just another change, but it's a really important one. But I'll let you take over and we can talk about yeah, some of this. I, I, think, I think if you look at it, it creates a hurdle and it creates an advantage. Yep. It has two sides of the coin. On one hand, it's a hurdle because many data centers have been built we will be regulated backwards 2030, so that's a hurdle. It creates, let's say, an advantage level playing field. So no one can hide anymore. There were a few of the good guys who were doing the right things, designing without using water, designing with low PUEs, taking care of what you, what, on the ESG part in general. So they can't hide anymore. So that, that's the good thing. If, uh, hold on. If we go to the vendors and the operators. The vendors as well, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, because this, this is a really important part. So if you think about it, we're dread enemies 99% of the time. But on this issue, we're best of friends. Yes. And we're thinking through how do we deal with this societal problem as a whole. And that's what we've done through the European Data Center Association, the European Data Center Association, digital ourselves, some cloud providers through the CISP got together and built the Climate Neutral Data Center Pact. So if you think about the positives, we've established a set of, of climate neutral targets that are both aggressive but achievable. And we've given them to the, to the European Commission and we're seeing these incorporated into laws. But they do need our vendors as well to work with us. And that's probably going to be on things like transparency and reporting and, and working together to create a transparent world where people can see what we're doing and how efficiently we're doing it. So and then on the vendors, so my, my, my other role where I'm in the governing body of the iMasons, we start looking at embedded carbon. So my liaison in that role with the EU DCA, where we both are, is to ensure that we do not do overlapping stuff. Because although Europe is leading, if we do something the right way on a global perspective somewhere in another country, we should use that. And so what we will be using the vendors sooner rather than later is to tell us how much carbon is in your product. That's level zero or level one. Then we will say, okay, level two, level one will be, it's split up into these portions. Level three, it will be this material specifically, these amounts. We will talk about how can we recycle this? What will be the end of life? All of that, we do somewhere else. We bring it back to, uh, to, uh, to Europe, to EU DCA. We bring it back to the European Commission yeah. to make absolutely sure we're not doing double things. Double standards are bad, even for, for companies who have a single footprint. Because if there would be a European standard, and let's just take the IT business, and the IT would use the SRA standard, and we would come up with another standard. So there is a single company in a country, they come up with a standard you can't use. Because the IT vendor will say, oh, that's brilliant what you just asked me, but if you want your warranty, comply with this. So make it one standard. Don't be like say, oh, it needs to be a European standard. Oh, it needs to be a US standard. Think internationally. That's what I love about ISO. And that's what we're trying to do now with our, technology, our technical committee, where we're saying, look, let's start looking at the data center of the future and let's document in advance these are the technologies that we're all going to have to adopt. 
Let's discuss it together as vendors and operators. We're not distinguishing, sorry, not distinguishing between a big global vendor or a small vendor or, or a startup. We're saying we all need to work in this together. How are we going to handle this problem? In the past, we let evolution solve it. Two technologies come along, we'd play a little bit with it, they'd play yeah. a little bit with it, and then ultimately a technology would become the standard. We got to be a lot more prescriptive now. On top of that, in the past you could make a choice. Lowest cost data center, highest technology data center, and anything in between. Today is first, what do I think will happen in 10 years from now? Yeah. On legislation, what do I think will happen on water? What do I think will happen on carbon? And you need to predict and design according to that. So that's one of the big, big jobs we have today at the large companies. Look ahead. What impact does upcoming legislation have on investment opportunities? And how can the sector hope to influence this? I think that, first of all, there will be a little slowdown because cost of capital went up, but demand is not changing. No. So demand, we are building something unique. We're building the digital economy, the digital society. Never happened before. So the demand will be there. So eventually it will all flatten out. We will all find our ways to get, let's say, the data center industry boost up again in all kind of construction and development. That's my view at yeah. least. And I like your yin and yang story you started with. There's two sides to the equation. You know, the European Commission came out with the Green Deal, we're going to build a green economy, but they also came out with another one, which is we want to build a digital economy. And in fact, they even said, we can only hit our sustainability goals if we digitize. Yeah. So the problem with regulations is that it will create a temporary slowdown as we readjust. But in the end, what they want to do is they actually want to boost the growth of the digital economy. They just want to do it in a manner that's transparent so that yeah. the citizenships can see okay, it's happening, it's happening in an efficient manner, a sustainable manner, we can see what's going on, we're happy with what's going on. Part of the problem I think we dealt with in the past was we were relatively opaque, we were under the radar. Yeah. So we're, transparency is really about bringing us up above the radar, not to inspect and stop, but to get trust. Yeah. I think that's where we're going to see a resurgence yeah. in demand. Yeah.